Nicole Maliotakis. Great suit, by the way. Thank you very much. What is that pin you're wearing? What is that? This is my congressional pin. How'd you get that? <laughs> I worked hard. <laughs> I raised a lot of money and worked hard. So when you actually win and you become a member of Congress, uh, it's kind of like La Cosa Nostra, right? They cut your finger. They give you a pin. Yeah. It's a whole thing, right? Yeah, well, this pin is one of the benefits of being in Congress because I can actually get around this building a, is little, that bit right? e- a little bit easier, yes. But you still need a, a credential. need a credential, um, but, you know. Don't you think, uh, and I understand our friend the president just got shot a couple of days ago. Yeah. But don't you think security here is a bit much? No, look, I think it's warranted, especially what happened the other day. Uh, it's a lot of walking. We're getting a lot of steps in because yeah. the perimeters are huge. Uh, but, look, I think it's obviously in this day and age, it's just sadly necessary. Yeah, I think, um, it's, I think it's a bit much. I, I think it's necessary. This is a bit much. Well, you're a tough guy, though. You could defend yourself. I get very angry. Yeah. Yeah. I was angry yesterday. I was. I had to walk out of here and had to walk a pretty good distance over, over the Milwaukee River Bridge to find a spot where I can get an Uber to get back to my hotel. I'm yeah. staying all the way out west. And you're not going to believe this, Nicole. I'm standing on the corner of State and Water Street here in Milwaukee, and across the street in this park is a massive, I mean massive, pro-Palestinian rally. Mm. One guy actually made the mistake of saying good morning to me. He was wearing a free Palestine shirt. He said, good morning. Couldn't have been nicer. I said, don't you talk to me. He said, excuse me? I said, walk across the street, you Jew hater. And I, and I, didn't, I didn't really, th- well... I didn't threaten him. He still called Secret Service on me. But I couldn't believe mm. right here, five minutes away, you, it's not just in New York, huh? Well, I'm sure they're from New York. They probably came all the way over here just to annoy you. <laughs> well, we do a terrible job of that in New York, too. I mean, terrible job, no? Well, look, I think it's unfortunate that uh, young people have just, this is part of the problem with our education system. That young, And they're not, they're not just pro Palestinian, they're actually pro-Hamas. They're pro actually murder. rooting for Hamas. Right, that's right. There's a difference there, but Hamas is, I mean, they, they were happy when Hamas endorsed them. I know. Right? And so did Iran. The Iran, Iranian Ayatollah endorses them, and they're excited about it. It's unbelievable. And I'll tell you this, uh, because it was the first day of Passover, Monday, and I went to Colombia, and I took Anthony D'Esposito, Bruce Blakeman, Mike Lawler, and the actor Michael Rappaport. You came two days later with Mike Johnson yes. to Colombia. And I said this to Bill O'Reilly. There's no school right now. It's kind of quiet. The last bad incident was the train and outside of Nova. If you don't think when school starts in September, they're going to be right back at Columbia, NYU. You're somewhere between naive and stupid and closer to the ladder. They're going to come back. And you know what? I'm really happy my House Ways and Means Committee last week passed out my legislation that would fine these schools if they're violating these students' civil rights, if they're not protecting these students from anti-Semitism uh, and they, they have a complaint filed of them and they're found guilty, then they will be fined. And I think it's really important that we send that message. We're going to hold these institutions accountable. In fact, the day we announced that we were going to be taking up this bill in my committee was the day that three of those administrators were suspended indefinitely. And I think it was in response to seeing right. our bill coming out, knowing that we were going to be passing it out of the Ways and Means Committee. And I hope we take it up on the floor soon. I'm really happy to work with Elise Stefanik on that, uh, and and uh, it's a good bill, and we need to get it done. It's a great bill. I know you guys are also working on defunding these universities, public and or private. Where's that? Yeah, well, we have a couple of pieces of legislation that we're working on. Um, one of my other bills would actually strip visas from foreign students who participate in these anti anti-Semitic activities. And, um, you know, we, we're, that one's moving along. I think the, the speaker is interested in doing something along those lines, whether it's going to be my bill or somebody else's. We'll see the details. Um, but I think that's really important. And then, of course, stripping 501c3 status has been on a discussion. We'll see what happens there. Uh, but stripping federal funding is one bill that I've also introduced. Uh, it gives a mechanism for de- the Secretary um, of, de- of Education to move forward and strip yeah. them if they don't hold these professors right. and student organizations accountable. Professors are a big problem, too. The alumni, too. Uh, uh, which is professors. You know, um, I'm a New York guy. You're a New York girl. And I'm a dick. I understand that. So, like, Mike Johnson shows up yesterday. He's the House Speaker. He's a speaker for everybody. But for some reason, I think he only cares about me and us in New York. And I've been with Mike when he's been with you guys, our New York delegation, if you will. And it's probably just me. I just admitted it. But I feel like for some reason, he really likes us, like you guys. He really likes you guys. 
Am I getting carried away, or is that true? No, look, I think he's been a good speaker for the members of New York. Um, he is somebody who, you know, listens to our concerns. Um, we, you know, it's, it's from Louisiana, so we had to, like, kind of, you know, work on him a little bit. But right. I think that he uh, he really likes, he like he loves Anthony D'Esposito, though. He does, He, he yeah. loves Anthony. Yeah. He loves yeah. to do an impression of Anthony <laughs> D'Esposito and his tough guy uh, cop yeah. Yeah. mentality, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but, look, I think he's been to New York quite a bit supporting the members uh, who are the vulner- more vulnerable members like Michael Aller and Anthony D'Esposito and, and others. Uh, and we give him a lot of credit for that because he's just, you know, he's new to the job and he's got a lot of places to go around the country to meet people and do things. And he's spending quite a bit of time in New York helping uh, our members to make sure because he understands that New York is the majority. He understands that these seats that we flipped, mine included, which we flipped in 2020, need to be held if we are going to keep the majority hopefully expand the majority uh, in November. Well, how do you feel about that? Uh, you got Mark Molinaro. He's another one yep. in uh, up in Hudson County. Uh, you mentioned uh, Lawler. I think Lawler wins. Uh, I think that Esposito is going to kill Laura Gillum. Uh, but uh, as a whole, how do you feel about retaining seats and adding seats? Something you've been right about for years. Well, I, I feel good about it. Obviously, when we won that lawsuit, when they tried to gerrymander me into Park Slope, when we won that lawsuit and they threw the entire map out and we got a fair, independently drawn map by a special master, that made all the difference in the world. Uh, we know in New York that if we have competitive districts drawn, that Republicans will win, especially right now because the Democrats have just destroyed New York with their uh, wanting to spend billions of our dollars to house illegal immigrants who are committing crimes. Remember, people are arrested for committing a crime, and they're going back to the hotel that you and I are paying for. Oh, unbelievable. It's ridiculous. It is. Uh, and, and they're getting more in services than our poor seniors who are living on Social Security. Uh, and that's something that that story needs to get out there and people need to hear it because it's unconscionable what they're doing to the taxpayers in New York. And, of course, our, our uh, my nemesis over there in Brooklyn, Justin Brannon, oh, just voted to increase the property taxes again, increasing the property tax levy once more as the finance chairman of the New York City Council. So people who are upset should express their views to Justin Brannon for increasing our property taxes because he says one thing and then he goes in the council chamber and votes a different way. Is he still considering money against you? At some point? Well, no, he didn't have... The balls. Yeah, well, good. Yeah. I'm glad you said it. He, <laughs> yeah. didn't, he, ah. he, he didn't have it to run. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's... he's uh, whatever. I Leave mean, uh, honestly, um, look, I, I think the people of this district uh, would reject somebody like Justin Brown. So do I, yes. Overwhelmingly, which is why he didn't run. I mean, he voted to defund the police. Right. He voted, uh, you know, he supports... He doesn't want to change the sanctuary status of New York. He uh, doesn't want to deport people who are committing crimes. Instead, he increased the property taxes once again to help give more billions of dollars to house these criminals in uh, these shelters. It's unbelievable. You all great. Great job today. Enjoy the rest of the week, and congrats on everything you're doing, Nicole. Thank you so much. Great to be with you. Thank you. You too. That's our great congresswoman out of Staten Island in Brooklyn. She really is terrific. My friend, Nicole Maliotagas. Go get him.